This is Bob Dotson in Jonesboro, Georgia. Mary Thompson found it tougher to pick a president than a husband. Had I held the absentee ballot for about three weeks before I even filled it out because I couldn't decide. She flirted with voting for Clinton, but negative campaign ads scared her off. Knowing that Bush has gotten us through some tough times, it seemed like a better choice. Tomorrow's election won't be a love match. Weekend polls show Southerners will vote not for the candidate they like, but the one they dislike the least. The race here is a dead heat, even though both Democratic candidates are from the South. Are you satisfied with the choices you were presented? No. Donna Turnipseed is leaning toward Clinton. I, right now, I feel the lesser of the three evils. <laughs> it's really going to be a toss-up as to who is going to do the better job for the country. Time is clicking away. It's going to go down the fourth quarter. They're going to see who's going to suck it up at the end. Clinton fumbled an early lead in the South. White male voters are shifting back to the Republicans. I think I'm going to vote for Bush, but uh, I can't trust Clinton. Francine Mason does, and she may vote for him, but still isn't sure. She's seen signs the economy is picking up. And I've seen a lot of people uh, moving into new houses. We just moved into a new house a couple of months ago. It is part of the Southern soul to love an underdog, but Bush has not had a winning season lately. Clinton. Rock the room, get in there. It's going to take them eight years to clean up behind Bush's mess. And Bush can do it in four years. <laughs> but who will get the ball? For today, Bob Dotson, NBC News, Jonesboro, Georgia. which is near Columbus and so I, yeah okay. I like this I like the winters here a whole lot better yeah. yeah well I got a dumb question for you okay what's on your mind today except getting married <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that's probably the biggest thing on the mind <laughs> just getting it over with having some second thoughts oh no 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 you know, when, when I got married, and when lots of folks that I've talked to who got married say there's always a moment where you go, hmm, am I making the right choice? And then, of course, it always blows over, and, and you go ahead and get married. And one of the reasons why we're, we're doing a little short bit here at the, at the wedding is that it appears to me that Tuesday's election is going to be quite a bit like that. No matter who you've decided to vote for, it's been such a volatile campaign that you might have that little beat before you go into the booth or even in the booth, you, yeah. know, you know. Am I really making the right choice? Oh, yeah, I'm making the right choice. I have no doubts about it. Yeah, she's a super lady. How about politically? Are you as happy with your choice politically? Yeah, yeah, I think I'm making a good decision. Did you change at all during the uh, campaign? campaign? No, uh-uh, no. You mind talking a little bit about who, who, who it was? No, I, I'm for Bush. I think he's, he's had his ups and downs, but I think he's done a pretty good job. And did you vote Republican all through the, uh, through the 80s? Uh, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, some of the, uh, some parts of the South that have traditionally gone for Republican uh, presidents uh, are now nip and tuck. Was there any time when you kind of questioned about your choice, you know, before you finally settled? No, I don't think so. I've been Republican for a long time. I'm pretty stuck on Republicans. So you never never worried about the economy or, or any of that sort of thing? Oh, yeah, I worry, but, you know, uh, I'm just staying Republican. That's good. That's good. 
No questions about that, you just... No, uh, no, no questions, I... Huh. Uh, well, what do you think about the, <clears throat> what do you think about the process this time? Were you, were you happy with the way all the campaigns ran? Yeah, I, I, I liked the debates. The debates were real good. Uh, I think they both had some good points. All three of them had good points. Do you feel like you, uh, you learned more in this campaign than in others? No, not really. I Even with those debates? Yeah, I think most debates have been, you know, pretty uh, informing as to what the candidates believe in. It's still no one's actually done, right? Okay. <coughs> mm -hmm. Go ahead. You know, a lot of the, uh, the talk this, this weekend has been about uh, the character factor on all the candidates, that it's finally boiled down after all the various issues have been discussed to, do you trust this guy, whoever it is, to lead us another four years? Do you, did you have to grapple with that all summer or no. for five minutes or 20 or? No, I, I trust uh, I can't President Burr. Because this is just a big black wand, and I wave <laughs> this and you're married. Oh, my God. You know, my father can be your father. Wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> <laughs> Hit it over with that quick. Yeah. Well, just so we make sure we've got the uh, uh, the sound, I just may ask you, if you'll bear with me, I may ask you a couple questions again. Uh, one thing is is that we, we've come down to the final weekend where it seems the only question to settle is character. It's kind of like getting married. Mm -hmm. You know, ultimately, whether or not you can live with this person for four years and trust them. Did you have to wrestle with that at all? No. Uh, no, I believe in President Bush. Uh, he's had some bad things in the last four years, and he's done some good things. And I really feel like I can trust him another four years. When you get into this process, what did you question? What, what were your worries? What were your expectations and why you picked the candidate? Oh, the economy, uh, interest rates. I like the interest rates that they are now. Uh, Democrats worry me on the interest rates. Seems like when Democrats are in office, interest rates go up. So I'm, I'm very comfortable with, with the interest rates. The housing market seems to be coming back. It was down, it seems to be coming back now. So. Did any of your friends flirt with uh, going over to Clinton, who normally had voted for uh, the Republicans? Yeah, I hear a lot of talk on the CB radio of people, you know, arguing and trying to decide who's better, you know. I hear a lot of that on the CB. What do they say? Oh, they just, they argue about the economy and what one can do and what one can't do. It's just radio talk. And any people you've heard on the radio who you know used to vote Republican? Oh, yeah, there's been quite a few that have switched, that have switched over because they're unhappy with the way the system's being run now. But you have any last misgivings? No, uh-uh, no. I'm just staying Republican. All that CB chatter didn't affect you one oh, way or no. another? No, 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 sure didn't. So kind of like your wedding here today, when you go into that voting booth on Tuesday? Mm hmm No misgivings? No. No. It's a sure thing all the way. Okay, thank you. I see that wasn't painful. Appreciate you letting us in. Oh, this is—I never dreamed this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get good pictures out of it, anyhow. Yeah. yeah thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.
I'll tell you what, she needs uh, needs a couple of shots of you folks fussing with her dress yeah, a second. Why don't you all just slide up here and pretend like we're not here for a second? Gotten real good at that. Yeah, sun well, the sun in kept coming in and out. He was having a terrible time. Yeah, fortunately in photography, you only, only have to worry that a couple things work right once right. in a while. Yeah, yeah. So I got a big question for okay. you. Okay, what's your... Other than getting married, what's on your mind today? <laughs> Ready to get it over with. <laughs> no, it's, it's just exciting. I never expected to get married, so... Well, he must be quite a guy because... Oh, he is. He's very, very special. Yeah, I mean, thing. you ended up waiting for him and you a found A long it. time, so... I never expected to get married, so that makes it even extra special for me. Well, one of the reasons why we're here, too, is that uh, next Tuesday, when people go to the polls... All right, and I've already done my absentee ballot. Oh, have you? I sure did. Well, did you have any second thoughts, like, at the last minute? Yeah, I really did. I'll be honest, it was hard to know. So I finally just had kind of had to decide, you know, which I thought was the better decision. It was hard. It really was. What was hard about it? There were too many questions about all three candidates, to be honest, and I just kind of had to weigh, you know, what I had read and what I had heard and just see what I thought seemed to be the smarter thing to do. And I hope I made the right decision. <laughs> during all this process, did you change during the year, like lean towards one and move back? Yeah, I really did. Uh, in fact, at one point, I was even going toward our third party just because it seemed like a, a good alternative. You know? But then someone else said, and they're probably right, it could be a waste to vote, too. Maybe that's the wrong way to look at it. Um, so it was kind of hard to weigh back and forth. So yeah, I went back and forth a lot. I really, in fact, I held the absentee ballot for about three weeks before I even filled it out because I couldn't decide which way for sure I wanted to go. Um, well, that's a little like a wedding. I know everybody oh, who's ever been through a wedding, there's always that split seconds where you say, do I really want to make this person mine? But I've been very sure. Well, in, in some ways, it's like going to the polls. Well, that's true. That's you got true four true. years with whoever you pick, you right. know. All right. And I guess because of our age, when, when we met, we, we knew pretty quick it was meant to be. So we've actually only been engaged five months. But we just knew from the beginning. I mean, just, I don't know, it just worked out that way. But we knew almost you're telling me it was way. easier to pick your husband than it was a candidate. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> Well, of course, I mean, it wasn't, you know, all that easy because there were a lot of things to consider because I've been on my own 20 years. But, and so we're combining two 20-year households. That there's a lot of things to consider there and, you know, things you're going to change and, you know, moving, selling my home and moving to another home. And, you know, I have three cats. I've got to relocate three cats. You know, a lot of things to think about. But, but I'm sure I made the right decision. It's kind of like the voters having to make a decision <laughs> yeah. on Tuesday. What they're going to do with right. their cats and right. sell them. And they're going to cost exactly more for right. my cats. And, You're exactly right. Yeah. But it seems that this weekend it's finally come down to one final issue of character. Who do you trust? Mm -hmm. That's got to be a tough decision for folks. It is. Because there's been so much, I guess, mudslinging, whatever, this year. You know, things that you would think, things that we don't usually hear in elections have come out so much this year. And it's kind of, to me, detracted from a lot of the the issues and really things that we should have been thinking about as citizens, you know, what's going to be right for our country with all the name calling and, you know, charges here and charges there, and, you know, and you don't know how much of that's true, it, but it does make you stop and think on, you know, who, who's going to have the lesser charges against them sometimes. And that's kind of the last few weeks especially it's seen that much. 
Even more so that way. Now, you don't have to tell me, but I figure I'll just ask you if you don't mind. After swirling all around, what was the process and who did you finally end up with? Father went with President Bush. Just because I felt like at this point I knew kind of what had gone before. And at this point it seemed safer than maybe some of the questions about the other two candidates. Did you lean to any of the others? I really did, Perot, very seriously. And Clinton at one point, and then I guess all the rumors and charges and all kind of made me stop and think about that. But I really thought about Perot just because he seemed to have a fresh outlook on things. Uh, and maybe that was wrong not to go and vote for him, but I hate to waste a vote too. If, yeah, to get in the Electoral College you now gets to a lot of problems sometimes. So the negative advertising actually kind of swayed your vote? I think it did. I really did. Uh, I guess because I like to hear the good things and not the bad things. And some of this year there's been so much negative and, you know, ugly charges and counter charges and all that. So knowing that Bush has gotten us through some tough times, it seemed like the better choice. So that's what I want to do. Well, congratulations. Thank, and thank you. you very much. Thank you. Have a good life. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Well, you're a great speaker. Thank you. <laughs> Many years of school teaching. Yeah, well, that, that helps too. Yeah. I'm not a public speaker. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it's you lovely. doing this. I can't oh, believe okay. you chose us. <laughs> We appreciate you putting up with our message. Oh, I, I appreciate know it's a big day for you. If we had not planned the video, just for Spencer, I think I have the passive assistant calling and said, you're not going to believe this. He said, you're right. I've got a video now. There she is right there. <laughs>
with them in this time of celebration together. They have asked, please, if you please remain seated as the wedding party makes their way through the professional and to the wedding hall. Genesis, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh and sped thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman, and brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, shall cleave him to his wife, and they shall together be one flesh. And then in Paul's letter to the church of Ephesus, the Apostle Paul gives to us an interpretation and an outline of how marriage is to work and to function in practical life. Under the total and overall principle of submission to authority, he addresses first of all the wives and then husbands and gives instruction to each. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in every thing. Husbands, love your church. For we are members of his body, his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his home with them, shall be able to sense God's goodness, God's glory, God's wonder. And I pray that the Spirit be their counselor and their everlasting God. From this sacred and holy moment through the rest of their entire lives, we ask in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 
The Bible tells us that the origin of marriage is in divine goodness and holiness. In the quiet hours of the Garden of Eden, before the forbidden tree had yielded its fateful fruit, or the evil tempter had touched the world, God saw that it was not good that the man should be alone, and so he created a helpmate and established the right of godly and holy marriage. In the New Testament, we read where Jesus, the Son of God and our Savior, attended a wedding in the little village of Cana in the region of Galilee. And it was there, according to the Gospel of John, that Jesus first demonstrated his divine power by changing the water into wine, which, as all would recognize, would be a physical miracle, transforming that which is one thing into that which is something other. But there's a spiritual miracle there, and that is that when Christ is present in the marriage relationship, when he is preeminent in the whole, then it has a different dimension about it. It is more than earthly. It is more than natural. It is more than human. It is supernatural, and it is divine. And so I pray that Steve and Mary, as they are brought together, will, of all people, they have invited to be present today, invite Jesus Christ to be present in their marriage relationship. And as we've read from the Apostle Paul, he recognized under the leadership of God that it is a good thing when a man finds a lovely woman to whom he will commit his life and ask her to be his companion for her to be married to him. Her mother and I. And now, Steve and Mary, because of love you have each other <clears throat> and of the vows you're about to take, please join your right hands. Simply face one another. Yeah. Steve, will thou have this woman to be thy wedded wife, to live together in the holy estate of matrimony? Will thou love her, <clears throat> comfort her, honor her, and keep her in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, keep the young under her, so long as you both shall live. I do. Mary, will thou have this man to be thy wedded husband, <clears throat> to live together in the holy estate of matrimony? Will thou love him, comfort, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, keep thee only unto him, so long as you both shall live. The giving and the receiving of rings are appropriate expressions of the love that you have pledged one to another. The perfect circle is a symbol of the never-ending love that binds your hearts together. The pure material is symbolic of your devotion to each other. Steve, I'd like now for you to take this ring and place it on Mary's hand and repeat after me. In token and in pledge, in token and in pledge, of the vow between us made, of the vow between us made, with this ring I thee wed, with this ring I thee wed, and with all my worldly goods, and with all my worldly goods, I thee and thou, I thee and thou, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Mary, I'd like for you to take the ring, <clears throat> place it on Steve's left hand. As you hold his hand, repeat after me. That's good. In token and in pledge of the vow between us made, with this ring I thee wed, and with all my worldly goods, I thee and thou, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
you would join your right hands again, please. Inasmuch as Steve and Mary have consented together in holy wedlock and have been witnessed the same before God in this company, I now pronounce that they are husband and wife. Of a husband is something that came from the mind of God. In our secularistic world today, few have stopped to remember that those qualities of a husband and a wife come from the Word of God. Consequently, if we're going to live up to the responsibilities and exercise the privileges involved with being a godly husband, we will find the description and the definition of such in the Bible, God's Word, a secular or a civil contract. Consequently, you will pray to God to ask Him to guide you that you might be a faithful husband. You will seek the leadership and guidance of the Holy Spirit that He might counsel you in receiving the joys and the privileges that are commensurate with being a godly husband. I uh, commend you and compliment you, and I know that you're going to fulfill the responsibilities to the very best of your ability so that God may be able to bestow upon you the joys and the happinesses of an outstanding husband. Mary, let me say to you that to be a wife, so if you would seek God's counsel, in the fulfillment of a wife and the relationships of being a, a lovely wife, you will find him to be helpful to you, giving to you direction and strength for your life. It is a compliment to you that Steve has invited you to be his wife. It is a gift of God that the two of you are brought together. And all of us here today who share this moment with you, covenant to pray for you and know something of your background and of your commitment. It is my firm belief that you will exercise to the best of your ability, both as a husband, Steve, and a wife, Mary. And my prayers, and my love, and my is your unity by the lighting of the single candle. Bow together now as we pray. Mm -hmm. 
want you to see her black first and then she's going to see I think you'd ever see this thing, did you? <laughs> 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 mm, you got the groom's cake. We got to cut it in there? Yeah. You want to take these? I'll save these for you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. See the knife a little better. That's good like that. Here we go. Looking out here for me now. Steve, a little tilt. That's good. Okay, here we go. Okay. Here we go. One more time. One, two. Okay. You don't have to. Today's the 20th, and this is a picture of Steve and Mary last year at their wedding. There we go. That's much better. Steve and Mary. Look at those pearly white grins. Okay. September it's on there. Um, I got a glare. Hold it down a little. No. Um, I got a glare on the picture. I can't. No, it's from with the way you're holding it. You're going to have to tilt it. There. There, right there, right there. Steve, Mary, and Dr. Carter. Okay. All the handsome dudes with the handsomest right in the middle. You know what? They all look like they have short little legs. Mm -hmm. and there's my favorite. Oh, that looks good. Dad, Mom, and Steve. That's a great picture. And here we are, the Barton family. About a year ago today. Well, a year and a month. Mm -hmm. Don't we all look spiffy? Wait a minute, I got a closer shot of it now. Okay, good shot. Well, yeah. But that's all right. Just get a shot. I can read it. My fa I think I can read it. My father was a man of all talents and strengths. My father was a man who devoted his in entire life. My father was a man who shared every thought. My father was a man of great courage and ability. My father was a man with natural talents. My father was a man who sought my every need. I don't think it'll be a finish. My father loved everyone. Including me. My father was a man who was always there. But the best thing of all, my father found a friend early in life. My father loved the friend more than anything else. That friend was Jesus, my friend too. Ross. I, I will always love, love you, Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> Gay farmer, farmer Barton. <laughs> Howdy, this is a lazy farmer. 
Just come in from feeding the hogs. Thought I'd say howdy. <laughs> from feeding the hogs? Yeah. Them hogs. <laughs> Your hogs. Them hogs. Hugs. hogs. Them hogs. Hogs. <laughs> you want to say anything else? That's enough for now. Okay. Hi, everybody. This film was made special for all of you down there who love Steve. Uh, Wait a minute. Okay. We expect you all to come up and visit us at the farm. Steve always wanted you to come. Take care and we love you all. Bye-bye. There you go. Hi. Just having a little pizza with my mama and papa here on the farm. <laughs> Thank you all for all your hospitality. We really, really appreciated it. And we do want you to come visit. I live right next door. See y'all later. Take care. Come yeah. have some pizza here. Look at the size of that pizza. And Mom, Dad, and I ate all this. We still have some hearty appetites. <laughs> okay. Steve, Mary, and Ross. Christmas time last year. Don't know what they're all looking at. Probably Mom and Dad opening their presents. This is mom and dad's house looking from the road to, towards their house. In bloom in the spring. Uh-huh. That's my wallpaper in my dining room that you're seeing now. This, that's our house looking from mom and dad's house. That's my wallpaper again. And that's a picture of my house from the road. Steve helped put that cedar on that house and did all of our stereo wiring. Okay. There, now I am. What you doing, David? Wait a minute. What do you have to say to the folks in Georgia? These are my tools. Those aren't all of them, though, are they, honey? Hello. There's a lot more. You gonna say hey? Hello. Hey, Dave. Hey. There's another shot of Grandma. Bye, everybody. I'm going home. See you later. Bye, Grandma. Enjoy the film.